Just quickly before we jump into today's video, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to Marvel Snap for sponsoring today's video. It is a new free to play collectible card game on PC and mobile featuring over 150 of your favorite Marvel heroes and villains. As you guys may or may not know, I've been playing collectible card games for pretty much my entire gaming career and Marvel Snap is my new favorite for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it is free to play and it is not pay to win. You can't just buy your way to a better deck. You have to level it up and acquire the better deck. I love this. Secondly, somehow the game is so simple and easy to pick up to start playing, but as you play more and start versing more unique and difficult decks, it reveals a whole massive skill ceiling to it. Marvel Snap takes place over six turns and features three random locations. Each turn a player is granted plus one energy to play cards. Turns are simultaneous, so each player makes their move during the same turn. I love the location system in this game. Basically to win, all you have to do is control two of the locations at the end of turn six. You have to have more power at those locations, but the locations don't reveal straight away. Only one does, and the other two reveal throughout the match. So you can bank on getting a better location later, but unfortunately, sometimes those gambles don't pay off. Like I said earlier, the game is now out. Steam for early access for PC or fully launched on the iOS and the App Store. Click the link in the description down below if you want to download it. And thank you again to Marvel Snap for sponsoring this video. G'day mates. I've been getting a lot of questions. When is Late Game Arena coming back? When are Late Game Cup starting? When is the Console Champions Cup? Do I need Champions Division for the Console Champions Cup? I'm just getting a lot of questions about upcoming tournaments and I wanted to make today's video. What are the tournaments that are coming up? When are they on? And what points do you need and how are they gonna work? Cause we're about to have one of the most exciting months of competitive we've ever had. We're gonna continue to have the Divisional Cups, but we're gonna add in two Late Game Cash Cups every single week, one solos, one trios. We're gonna have the $1 million Invitational LAN event. We're gonna have two DreamHack LAN events. We're gonna have the Console Champions Cup. There's gonna be PlayStation Cups. There is just going to be so much going on and I wanna cover all of it so you know what's happening, when, and how to play in it. Let's kick off talking about Late Game Arena and the Late Game Cash Cup. So up until a few days ago, the only information we had was we are continuing to work hard to bring back Late Game Arena and events as quickly as possible. The new target release date for Late Game Arena is 1st of November with events following soon after. Now that was tweeted out on the 6th of October. So that was quite a while ago, it was about three weeks ago. Unfortunately, between me filming this video at home and now going on my holiday, we have now had Late Game Arena delayed even further. They said we're delaying Late Game Arena's return beyond communicated November 1st target date so we can continue making necessary improvements. We'll provide an update when there's more to share. So unfortunately, I'm guessing that also means the tournament's being pushed back. I originally made this video to get everyone a whole really excited the fact that Late Game Arena is coming back, tournaments are coming back next week. Hopefully, this is a short delay. If you don't know what's been going on with Late Game Arena, we were supposed to actually have Late Game Arena and Late Game Cash Cups throughout this entire season. So starting from week one, when we had the Divisional Cup start, Late Game Cash Cups were supposed to start. So if you're freaking out, why did Epic take away solo Cash Cups? Why is it only these Divisional Cups? That that is why these were supposed to replace the, the cash cups. And honestly, I don't think that's a terrible idea going forward. Late game just feels way more fun, feels way more exciting. People just want to jump in, get going. Then you have these like maybe divisional cups or FNCS, which is a few more stages. But then these trio cash cups can just be replaced with late game cups. It really was a good idea from Epic, but unfortunately they've had delay after delay to the game mode. If you don't remember when it first came back, it was in the game, then it kind of went to creative. Now it's back in the game, but it's also creative. And I think a lot of this is them struggling to score. They can't actually score creative properly in the same way that a lot of creative maps struggle to score games properly. So you can't run tournaments on them. It is really unfortunate because I feel like one of the biggest, you know, letdowns of this entire season was late game cash cups and arena being missing. If we had that from day one, I feel like the hype around this season would be so much higher. But assuming we're still gonna get some of these cash cups throughout the season, I do wanna talk about their prize pools because they were pretty solid as well. The late game trio prize pool now this is from Fortnite Tracker, so this is per player, is $1,000 each for first for EU. So $3,000 total, and then top six teams are gonna get $300. They're gonna take place on two rounds. You're gonna have two hours to qualify for round two, so if it's trios, two hours to get top 33 teams, one hour break, and then you're gonna have a two hour finals. Solos was gonna have a $3,000 prize pool for first, and you're gonna get at least $300 for last. 
same format. It was going to be two hours to get top 100 players, one hour break, and then two hours to play the finals. The schedule was looking insane. As far as me watching tournaments, I was so excited for these to come back. It's pretty much just going to be stacked end games for like 10 hours straight if you're playing all the different regions. It would have been incredibly exciting, and I have really wanted to keep this video positive, but it has unfortunately been delayed. Now, this is obviously around the whole Creative 2.0 thing, and this scares me a little bit with Creative 2.0 launching very soon because if Epic is struggling to use this to be able to have a scoring format, I don't know how other random people are going to be able to make creative game modes with scoring, but imagine how exciting it will be once we can. We can make our own late game arenas. We can have our own box fight tournaments that you can put on tournaments that you can actually score in creative. It would be incredible. Unfortunately, yet again, another delay though. I'll keep you guys up to date when they are bringing late game arena back. I'm assuming hopefully it's only a one or two week delay. The fact they have to tweet out about it so early does scare me. Maybe Epic's just scratching the late game for this entire season. I just don't know. Now, what about you console guys? What is going on with the console champions cup? Essentially the console FNCS. This is the quarter of a million dollar console tournament every single season where Xbox and PlayStation get to play together, not just the PlayStation cups. I'll talk about those in a second. Unfortunately, at this point, we don't know when this is, but we know there is one happening. A lot of you guys seem to think, oh, there is no console champions cup this season. There is in the blog post they did at the start of the season, console competitions, console competitors for this coming season. You'll notice that most tournaments are open to all platforms. Later in chapter three, season four, so later, I'm gonna guess in the final few weeks, we will continue the seasonal offering of the console champions cup with a $250,000 prize pool. In partnership with PlayStation, we'll also continue providing monthly Fortnite PlayStation cups in September, October, and November. So this season is ending, I think it's December 3rd. So that pretty much means that you will have to have the console champions cup at the latest late November. They could run it the last day of the season like they did a couple of seasons ago, but I really hope they don't do that it kind of feels weird. Everyone's geared up for the new season. Everyone's ready to move on. And then there's just the big console cup. Feels a bit odd to have a giant tournament right before the meta and the whole season's about to shift, but at least they are still putting it on. So that is going to be on at some point in November, I imagine, or the first few days of December if they're pushing it back to the absolute latest. Now, we also have the PlayStation Cups. For you Xbox guys, I'm sorry. I know how annoying it is hearing about all the PlayStation Cups. Again, PlayStation are in a partnership with Epic. They're going to continue continue putting on a lot of tournaments. If you really do want to play in these, it might be worth copping a PlayStation if you can. But the PlayStation Cups are going to be continuing in September, October, November. I believe there is one on October 27th. We don't have the exact date for the November one yet, but the prize pool is pretty damn solid. On Europe, it is $2,000 for first and last place is going to walk away with at least $200. Now, it is solos. I'm getting some flashbacks here. I don't know if you guys saw how the last solos PlayStation Cup went. It was bad. It resulted in, in a lot of people getting banned for teaming. I think the most bans we've ever seen from a single tournament. That was no builds though. No build solos is always going to promote an element of teaming because it's basically the only way to consistently survive or at least without all the new items and no builds, it was. You pretty much just got in a car with other people and just decided not to fight. So at least this is a builds tournament. So I don't think there will be as much teaming. I, I really do wish it was duos, not solos, but hey, I guess we'll see at least It'll make some funny content. Next up, we have the FNCS Invitational, the first epic ran LAN event since the World Cup, $1 million. It is a duo event taking place on November 12th and 13th. The 50 best duos from around the world. And I've already told you guys, I'm stepping it up. I'm doing a big broadcast for this one. I've already got Reese Hub and Levin 2 k confirmed. Gonna be casting alongside me on my stream of the clean feed. It's gonna be incredible. I am so excited for this one, but I also wanna start getting you guys a little bit more hype for this one too. If you guys haven't seen the drop spots, it is already looking a little bit spicy. If you look down at Condo, we pretty much have the three best teams on EU for whatever reason contesting each other at Condo. So we have Tayson's team, Malabuka's team, and Aqua's team all going at it for a drop spot that really can only sustain one team. Before they had the Chrome Happer down at Condo, you could get away with having two teams here, one North, one South. But now with there being almost no loot in that Northern section, the only way two teams can make it out of this drop spot is if 
you let one of them open the vault. These teams aren't doing that. If you guys watched the EU Elite Cup a few days ago, we basically had Aqua and Malabuka going at it in Storm, willing to take the fight to the death. They were not giving up this drop spot. There was multiple times either team could have rotated out and still had a good game or had a good tournament. And they were like, nah, we care about the Invitational. We're spawn fighting this one. I have a feeling at least one of them will have to leave at some point, but it's going to be spicy. We also have Pink's team going up against Clix's team at Jones's. If you guys didn't see in the NA Elite, League Cup, Clicks and Dukes didn't even finish the tournament because they were having so much drama after being beaten by another team on spawn, or they weren't winning the fight. It was a little bit weird. The other team was just basing up on the mountain, basically waiting for them to fight. Then the third party would kill all of them. And essentially the other team, I'm guessing their logic was if Clicks and Dukes aren't winning, then they're losing. They didn't really care about winning themselves, but it went so far as to have Clicks and Dukes stop playing the tournament. And Duke said he is not going to be playing in any more of the Elite Cups until the season is over until the invitational starts so things aren't looking too good for clicks and dukes here but i guess we'll see how they go and there is a whole bunch more storylines developing across the map we get to see if some of these new up and coming players from other regions who we haven't heard much about can they show up and pull off like a king world cup moment really put their region on the map we have some cross region teams as well like we have canada playing with one of the middle east pros bleed it's going to be really exciting to see how this one goes we have the oce boys showing up luda picking up muzz because volks is obviously being banned and and just some other insane storylines developing in general. Can Booger Miro hold off what a lot of people are predicting to be an absolute EU onslaught? Can Booger handle the pressure of his first LAN event since the World Cup? These are all things I'm going to be putting in their own dedicated videos, but I want to start getting you guys excited for Invitational because I feel like the hype isn't there and it should be. Next up, we have our other two LAN events taking place in November. We have the DreamHack Open featuring Fortnite, bringing it back on November 18th and November 20th, we have Atlanta. And on November 25th to November 27th, we have Yon Shaping Sweden. So Atlanta especially has a lot of hype around it because as I just talked about, we have the Invitational taking place on 12th and 13th. That means there's a five day break between the Invitational and this DreamHack, and they're only one state away. Atlanta is only one state away from North Carolina. So almost all of the pros going to the Invitational, I imagine we'll go over and play in DreamHack. So we are going to potentially see all of these players playing in the solo event at DreamHack. So we get to kind of have a mini version of the Invitational. We get to crown who is the best solo player in the world. Obviously, we had DreamHack last year. We had Dallas. There was a little bit eh. It was kind of a rushed event that DreamHack put on and they know that and it was fun, but it was it was a little bit messy. But then we had Yon Shaping Sweden and that was sick. That was awesome. Kami and Seti coming right down to a single point. The difference. So we exciting but it was almost all eu pros because most pros couldn't afford to or didn't want to go all the way to sweden to play well now with this event in atlanta you're gonna have all those invitational pros also you do have another event in yon Shaping, sweden again i imagine this is going to be more of just who's the best of the best on eu i don't imagine too many na players are going to go to sweden but both of them do have a hundred thousand dollar prize pools it is not no builds they are all build events there is going to be four heats at each of them and a finals these are both going to be incredibly exciting Exciting. As you guys know, I will be streaming these. Last time I did go to Dallas and Yon Shipping. This time around, I don't believe I will be going to Atlanta or Yon Shipping. I want to do streams from home just because when I go to the event, it's really hard to control a lot of the, the factors that go into doing a stream. I have reached out to DreamHack to see if I can get a clean feed of the broadcast to make sure I can still put on a really, really good show. But instead of being from a random desk at the corner of DreamHack, it will be from my setup at home, everything controlled. It's going to be a good time. I'm super excited for both these events as well. In case that hasn't all sunk in, let me just recap what November looks like. So every single week, we are going to have two late game cash cups, which are going to be two rounds each. So basically two entire days of late game, just constant end games going crazy. Then we're going to have our two days of the divisional cup qualifiers like we've already been having. And then our finals of the divisional cups, that's five days of tournaments. Then three of the weekends of November, we are going to have land events. One being a $1 million land event and $200,000 land events, as well as a console champion Champions Cup and PlayStation Cups in the middle. November is going to be stacked. It is going to be incredible. And I'm going to be doing viewing parties and streams for all of this on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Antics. I'm also getting into watching some of the no builds. I know I haven't hyped up the no builds too much in this video, but that's because nothing's changing with no builds. It's going to be the same. No builds, quick cups, and then you're going to have the cash cups on Saturday. They haven't announced anything new coming out for no builds, but I imagine there's going to still be some big third party no build tournaments as well, just to spice things up even more. You guys know the deal. If you made it this far, if you enjoyed the video, please chuck a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.